wake up and so are we and unfortunately so is crime yeah because crime has been in a steady rise since the beginning of 2022 especially with the recent surges in St. Catherine namely Spanish Town we discuss the effects of crime in the old capital and its effects on residents and surrounding communities joining the conversation is social commentator Dennis Chung hi morning Dennis how are you doing Hi, morning, Delia and Neville. Delia, let me say I appreciate your dance moves, unlike Neville's, who, that only served to damage your reputation of Smile Jamaica. So, ignore him. Well, you know, I, that just make me know I will ignore you this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, my friend, uh, good to see you. Well, I'm good, man, anyway. <laughs> Can't complain, give thanks. Um, Dennis, crime is everywhere. Uh, not only Jamaica, crime is everywhere. Um, we are a small nation, obviously. I remember interviewing the Prime Minister a couple of years ago, and I told him that I can remember a crime-free uh, Jamaica. I can remember as a little boy, police never have any gun. And I asked him if he remembered that, and he said no. So crime is everywhere. Before we go specifically to Spanish town, Wagwan, Wagwan, Dennis, why we're killing kids and we're cutting people through it. Wagwan, what, what, where did this come from? Yeah, I've always maintained, Neville and Delia, that the... the, the problem with crime, and if you remember Rudy Giuliani's approach in New York, is that we allow the little things to go um, unnoticed without enforcement. So what we have done over the years is that we've developed a very fertile um, ground for, for crime to increase. So someone gets away with a, a, a small lie, and then they, they get away with a small infraction, a, a, a motor vehicle thing and then it just escalates and then on top of that you know we, we, we create a society where we have all these informal settlements where people are on top of each other where there you can't police them you know um, we, we, we just create a society of, law, of, of no law and order you know and if you think about it if you if children grow up without rules and without enforcement when they do things wrong. Then they just graduate to, to, to worse things. And that is what has happened to us, you know. Um, we don't understand the whole thing of allowing people to do the illegal vending, you know, um, throwing garbage everywhere, um, you know, playing music in, in defiance of the, the noise abatement act at any time, you know, just create a society of disorder and then we, we wonder why we have the crime situation that we have you know it, it's just like the road fatalities we take over 10 years to pass regulations for road traffic amendments which is going to increase fines and then we entertain when people are protesting against increased fines which is saying to me that they intend to break the law and they're protesting against it and and that's what we've allowed and, yeah. and this is where we are today i've never raised something interesting because uh the prime minister like myself um, grew up in Spanish Town, and yeah. Dennis, uh, since and, and since I've known myself, I've said to a person, I can't believe Spanish Town is back to this again, because um, we had the flare-ups. I thought it was dying down, but every now and then, Spanish Town, and it seems like there's a gang issue that we just can't curb. Why is that? What is it about Spanish Town? Well, I mean, Spanish Town has very organized crime over the years. And the, the truth is that, I mean, when you talk about the one gang being aligned with the JLP and one with the PNP, it, it, you know, it says to you that there's some element of support, you know, whether it's a public perception. No one has ever come out from either party and said, no, we condemn it and we are not aligned with them, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a very strong way. So... We've been encouraged by silence, you know, um, these things to happen. They, we've, we've, we've ignored the pleas of business persons from early to say, you know, help us with this extortion thing. And therefore, it has just grown. So it has grown into an industry. You know, that's what we've, we've allowed to happen. And when you have that happening, you know, um, people go where profits are, are, are greatest and less risky. And the truth is that there's a lot of profit in crime. You know, um, we, we see the whole thing of scamming also. The, the impact that we have made against crime in this country has never been um, initiated by us in Jamaica, you know. It's always the U.S. stepping in, you know. So we, we, just, we just don't have a, a, a culture. We don't have a, a, a bureaucracy 
that, that deals with the little things. I mean, I remember, as I said, I keep saying, I report an, a, a situation of, of illegal vending on the sidewalk near to a stoplight to the deputy mayor of KCC months ago, and he promised to do something about it, and nothing happens, and policemen drive past it, politicians drive past it, everybody drives past it, and it just continues. So, you know, if, if they can do that, why, why stop at that? One of, the, one of the things I noticed, Dennis, and I'm not, a, I'm not into governance, and I'm, I'm not going to pretend that I know more than politicians or anyone at all, but you keep hearing, them did do this, so, you know, it's not we do it. Instead of just fixing it, you know, um, I hear NHT, the other day, they will come out and say, well, the PNP, they only build one house, and now we have built three, and, you know, you, you, you keep hearing that it's Dennis' fault, it's Dahlia's fault, it's never fault. Instead of somebody just say, all right, this is what is happening, no. Make we fix it, no. Whether it's me that caused it 10 years ago or whether it's Dale that caused it 50 years ago, let's fix it. No, I think that's one of the problems, isn't it? That is one of the huge problems. There's no one that takes responsibility. And that's a good way of deflecting and not doing anything about it. You know, um, I've heard one of the things I always speak about, we, we wonder why um, the, 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 the criminals grow up and, and are so violent, right? But when you think about it, Children, and it comes from a simple thing, children in the inner city who have been subjected to, you know, every night going to their bed and hearing music blaring, speaking about what to do with women and how, and about gun lyrics and things. And this is what they've, they've grown up going to bed with for the past 15 years. And then we say, why are they like that? Or a situation I've always spoken about that, you know, a child, I remember a, a, a story on Nationwide that a child was being abused and the abuse was reported for six months to the Child, child Protection Agency before anything is done with it. And can you imagine a child being abused for years? What, what do they grow up with? What mentality do they grow up with? And those are the little things that if we don't fix it, you're only creating, as, as Harley Lewin said when he was commissioner years ago, we're creating, a, we have a factory to produce criminals. And, you, you know, you'll take out the criminals that are there now, but then there's a whole next generation of them coming up. And, and that, I think, is the main issue. Unless we fix the issues of law and order, of discipline, enforcing the small things, like Juliana did, the, the broken windows approach, we won't get on top of it. Because the truth is that, I mean, Fitz Bailey and his, his crew have been doing a very good job. Now. But by the time the police get involved, it's too late. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so one of the things for me, Dennis, is do we have the supporting infrastructure to, to fix it? Because, okay, so we're going to go in. Um, do the police have the resources to investigate and to do? Because we're looking now at, at one of the high-profile cases that, that's happening and a lot of the things in court um, you know, the, the, the judge is saying, well, this, we don't have enough of this evidence to say, yes, let's pursue it. When we do have it, do we have places that people are going to be incarcerated? Do we have, I mean, does the system exist to help us to fight crime? We have enough we, police? I think, I don't think we have enough police. We, we don't, it's inadequate. And one of the things that we have a problem with is that we don't pay our police or security forces enough. I mean, there's no way that policemen would have, should have been working overtime for how many years. We're quarreling with them about how much money we should pay them for the work that they've done in overtime. You know, that, the, how, how do we expect, even if we had enough police, to motivate them with asking them to work, right? Then after they work, you're going to dispute their payment, mm. right? I mean, we, we can't, you know, it's, it's more than the infrastructure. I mean... People, and we've seen it with our doctors, even though in many instances we don't have the proper infrastructure and equipment needed at the hospitals, the doctors do well because, you know, when, once you're compensated and motivated, you'll, you'll find a way to do it. And that's the first thing I think we need to address. But then the bureaucracy needs to support it. It's very frustrating for policemen, right? And I've spoken to policemen to, to, to try and address a traffic situation, for example. And they don't have powers under the law to do it. You, 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 you meet a taxi man and he has 100 tickets outstanding. Mm -hmm. And then he goes to the court and he gets, he gets fined $15,000.
Virgin, always good to see you. Um, excellent mm -hmm. thoughts this morning. I think you hit the nail on the head, truth be told. But having said that, people will be hearing this, and then tomorrow we're talking and say, Dennis, why this happened yesterday? And, and so, which is what you're kind of saying, because um, nobody will do anything about it. Great to see you. I will end um, by telling you an African proverb, and it says, the ruin of a nation begins in the home of its people. Yes. Yes. I, will, I will stop there. The ruin of a nation begins in the home of its people. That's an African proverb. All right? Stay with us. Soon come. Yeah, Thanks, man. Dennis. Social commentator, right. Dennis Chung.